In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how we can easily draw up this self-aligning jig just like the one we saw in the video within the multi-sided parts presentation. So let's just go and close this down. So let's go and create a new file. So in here, we're going to give this a width of 14 inches, height is going to be 8, material thickness we're working with is 1 inch. So at the XY in the centre, working with a very high modelling resolution, and then we could go ahead and press OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle, that's just to represent my work area. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and we're going to make that 11.75 by 6. Make that in the centre, x0, y0, press create and close. Next thing I'd like to do is go to the clip art tab and within the animals section I'm going to import the seahorse. I'm just going to double click on that. And then we're going to the drawing tab with that selected. I'm going to rotate that, rotate that about its center by 90 degrees and press apply. We can close that down. I'm going to select that. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to size this up uh, roughly around this size here. If we just go and tile our window so I can see what the component looks like. Now if we go into the modeling tab, let's just check the height of that. See it's currently at 0.39, let's just up that to 0.45 and press space to enter that in and we can close that down. Now I need to have some tabs in place to hold my seahorse into the material block. So let's just go to the clip art tab and in the 3D tabs folder I'm just going to import circular 0.5, double click that to put that in the centre and we'll hold down shift and just drag that out over to the left. If I just zoom in there, just try and bring that in so it's in line with the seahorse. And then I'm going to go and take that, say Control, Shift and H, just to take a copy on the other side. And again, let's just align that up. Okay, so you can see we've got that held in position there. I may just create one more by holding down Control, just to create a copy and then I'll just rotate that manually by using that uh, handle on the top there and then I could just go ahead and say control shift and V and that's going to create a copy vertically for me and then I could just move that tab in place. So I've got my four tabs to hold the part in place so let's just take that component, I'm going to go into the modeling tab and I'm going to create a vector boundary now with that vector that we've just created, I'm going to go into the drawing tab, I'm going to offset that outwards by a quarter of an inch, then we'll press offset and then we can close that down. So now that I've got my 3D model in position, I've got my tabs and I've got my relevant vector boundaries because when I come to run my 3D roughing and 3D finishing toolpaths, we're going to make a part that's going to be exactly in the centre of the material block so we won't have space for a profile toolpath to add tabs into that uh, toolpath so we have to add these tabs in manually. So now we're ready to create the vectors for the self-aligning jig. So let's just go to the layers tab, I'm just going to rename layer 1 and we're going to call this layer Seahorse I'm going to add in a new layer, I'm going to call this one self-aligning jig. Okay, so I'm just going to take this vector here and I'm actually going to move this to the self-aligning jig layer. I'm just going to switch the seahorse layer off for the moment while we just work with the jig. So let's just maximise the 2D view and if we go into the drawing tab we'll use this option here to zoom to fit. So we're going to cut this jig out using a quarter inch end mill. So what I need to do is create an offset of a quarter of an inch. To help me I'm going to use guides. So to pull out a guide all I do is simply click in the ruler here and I'm just going to snap that over into position following the line of the side of my rectangle. I'm going to do the same for this one. So I'm going to pull a guide down, snap that to the top of the rectangle I'm going to pull another one out the side and snap that to the right side of the rectangle and then pull one out for the bottom of the rectangle, snap in position there. And with each of these guys I'm going to offset them out by a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to right click here 
second thing that I can do is move that relative so we're going to create a new parallel guide relative to guide and um, we're going to put in a value of negative 0 0.25 press create new guide and we can close that down we could select this one again create new parallel guide relative this time we're going to go positive so we're going to make that 0.25 create new guide close that select this one relative offset positive 0.25 create new guide close that down and then take this one relative this time we're going to go negative uh, 0.25 and create new guide and we can close that down so in order for me to draw the stepped shape I need to create some more guides to help me now we know that the width of this rectangle is 11 and 3 quarters we've added this um, tab area here of a quarter of an inch where this guide is so that gives us a width total from one guide to the end of our rectangle here of 12 inches so what I'm going to do is create more guides from this guide here to the end point of the width of our rectangle in intervals of 3 inches so to do that I'm going to take this guide here right mouse click I'm going to move that relative 3 inches create new guide can see that there. Let's close that. I'm going to take this one, relative three inches, create new guide, close that one, relative to guide, create new guide by three inches, close that. And we already have a guide that represents the last three inches there. Okay, so we've got our spacing set up there. Now I need to create some more guides that are going to come down. Now I know that the uh, height of our rectangle is at uh, 8 inches here. So it's not 8 inches, it's actually 6 inches. And so I'm going to divide this up into 1.5 sections. So I'm going to take this guide here and we're going to move that relative. This time we're going to put in a value of negative 1.5. Press create new guide. Close that. Take that one. Relative negative 1.5. Create new guide. Close that one. I'm going to take that centre one, last one here, relative to guide, negative 1.5, create new guide, close that down. You can see now I've got all of the guides that I need to draw up my self-aligning jig. So now I have the guide geometry to help me draw up the asymmetric jig shape. So let's go into the polyline tool and we'll quickly draw this up. So I'm going to start at this point here. So you can see that my cursor is snapping to that guide there. So I'm just going to click in place and then I'm going to click to this point here and then this point here. And I'm going to come over to this point, click, and then snap here, click there, snap here, snap there. Come over to this point, I'm going to come down. I'm going to bring the step shape out again, down, then we're going to come out again, and we'll stop here and bring that over to this point here, snap there, snap to this point and to this top point there, snap there and there, snap to this point here, to this point here, snap there snap here, snap there, and we're going to go back to the start point. And we can see that I've got my jig in place there. So let's just close that down, just switch off the guides for the time being. So let's just take that original rectangle and we're just going to take it and delete it. So this is the stepped shape that we've got, so we're stepping out a quarter of an inch each time. That's because we're using a quarter inch tool. If we was using a half inch, we'd step out by half an inch and so on. And so now we're ready to uh, test this. So let's just go into the modeling tab. And so here I'd just like to check the height, the shape height of our seahorse. So with that selected, let's go into the properties. We can see that the shape height is at 0.45, so two of those is 0.9. That's okay, we're working with one inch material, so we're going to have a gap above and below. And that will help us to avoid any flat spots when we're cutting that out. So let's just close that down. Let's go to our layers tab and switch on the seahorse layer. I'll go to the drawing tab. Now we're ready to go over and switch to the toolpaths tab. So the first thing we need to do is set up our materials. Let's go to material setup. 
Now, if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial, then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available, and the material that you are using. So we're going to set as E0 to be off the top of the block. Material thickness we're working with is 1 inch. XY position, I'm going to put that to be in the lower left hand corner. Now we're working with a model that's 0 0.45, there's two of them, uh, so we're just going to have a gap above of 0 0.05, so we're going to have a gap below of 0 0.5, so that's going to accommodate for the other side of the seahorse, along with a gap of 0 0.05 for the underside as well. So let's go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath we're going to run is going to be a 3D roughing toolpath, just a basic roughing. I'm going to go in there, 3D roughing, quarter inch end mill. I'm going to use the selected vector, no offset because we don't need to offset that any further. I'm just going to z-level raster this. I'm going to call this one 3D roughing and we'll press calculate. It's just going to work that out for us and then we can preview that toolpath. Okay, let's close that down. Then we'll just go to view and we'll just tile our windows horizontal. And with that same vector selected, let's go and run a 3D finishing toolpath. Okay, so again, this is very basic 8th inch ball nose, selected vector, no offset. Uh, for this, I'm just going to raster that. I'm going to call that one 3D finish. And then we could go ahead and press calculate. That's just going to work that out for us. And then we can preview that toolpath. Okay, so I'm happy with that, and if we take a look at the Z value, we can see that's coming up at half an inch at the bottom there. So let's close that down. So now the most important toolpath here for this uh, example is checking that our self-aligning jig uh, self-aligns. So with that vector, what we're going to do is we're going to run a profile toolpath. So we're going to start by uh, selecting our depth. So start depth is at zero. Cut depth, we're going to cut all the way through the material, so we're going to say Z equals, and then the software will tell us that's one inch, that's what we set our Z to. So that's one inch in there, we're using a quarter inch end mill, so we must make sure we're using the tool that we set the steps up to, and vice versa. Okay, machine vectors, we're going to make sure that we machine outside of that vector, and then if we come down here we could just calculate that, so we're going to call that profile, press calculate. Okay, now before we preview that, I'm going to use this option here to run a solid preview. And so in the 2D view, we can see uh, the sort of hole, well, the negative space we're going to be left with when we cut that out. So if I just maximise the uh, 2D view, and if we just go into the drawing tab, I'm just going to pull that out a second, and what we'll do is we'll zoom to fit. And so if I take the vector, and now if I go into the mirror option and use the option to flip about job center and then flip horizontal and we can see that this vector, or the flipped side, uh, would fit snug into that negative shape. And this is just like the video that we saw in the introduction to multi-sided parts video, how when we flip the part over it's going to fit snug into that negative space. So that's how we know this works, by using this solid preview option. So let's just flip that back, so we'll just flip that horizontal, and then we could go ahead and press close, and then let's just preview that toolpath. Okay, let's just tile our window so we can see that. So that's what we'd have a part that looks like. So at this point what we'd do is we'd save this out, so we'll go to File, Save As, and then in the Self-Aligning Jig project folder, we're going to call this one self-aligning jig top and then we'll press save and then what we do is I'm just going to close this down and then I'm going to take everything in here now as we flipped the part horizontally, I must remember to flip everything, uh, all of our 3D side and our vectors horizontally also. So let's go to mirror selected objects, I'm going to flip about job centre, flip horizontally, and then we can close that down. And then when we come to run our toolpaths, that will line up. So all we need to do now is just recalculate the toolpaths.
and then press OK. I don't actually need the profile toolpath for this one and we can delete that and then we can just preview these toolpaths. And what I should have done is just reset the preview and then preview all toolpaths and that's going to cut the other side of our seahorse. And so just to test that we've flipped that and it's aligned correctly, what I can do is just take the outline vector of the seahorse, right mouse click and press copy, then I'm going to bring up the file, the original one, before we flipped it, and I'm just going to paste that vector in, and we're going to go over to mirror, I'm going to flip that horizontally and we can see that that is a perfect match there. So now that we know that that works, what we can do is save this file out. So we'll go to File, Save As, and we're going to save this one as the bottom. And then press Save, and then you can access that from the project folder.